Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone it's me Kexpert and today I made a video of some tips on how to improve your game this is my first video on YouTube with my voice in it uh, actually I was not planning to make a video on YouTube with my voice in it sooner but many of my friends and subscribers asked me to do a Tekken guide uh, and I was planning to add captions on the screen for the guide but I knew it'll be very hard for the players to understand and it'll be almost impossible to explain the tips of the guide so I hope the guide will be helpful to all of you and before I start I would like to mention one more thing this guide is not only for the players who are new to Tekken or who are at a beginner level this guide may also be very much useful to some experienced player who are previously playing Tekken so please watch the video till the end hopefully it will help you to improve your game I made the guide specifically for Tekken 7 but since the guide is very much related to the gameplay and mechanics of the game this guide may also be useful in other Tekken series like Tekken 6 and Tekken Tag Tournament 2 so guys, without further ado, here are my 5 tips on how to improve your game in Taken. So most of the time, people ask me which character should I take? Should I take Dragonov? Should I take uh, Brian? Or should I take Paul? Or maybe I should pick any Mishima like Devil Jin or Kazuya? Or any different character like Akuma? Or any female character like Nina? Well, the answer to that question is, pick any you want because in Tekken every character is unique and has some special moves and abilities that usually other characters don't have. You need to use those special moves and abilities in the game. If you're not using what the character is good at, you're not using the character to its full potential. So make sure to study your, your character once you pick it and so you can understand his playstyle. Let's take an example of King. King is known as the best grappler in the game. He has variety of grabs, some of which deal a lot of damage. He has chains of grab. He grabs his opponent and keep doing the grab and deal damage to the opponent until the opponent press the right input button to escape the grab. So if you're a king player, you should definitely mix your playstyle with some of his grabs. You can also use his grab in combos. But he's not limited to grabs. He has some great punishes and pokes as well. And then there are Mishimas. They are very strong characters of the game because they have effective punishes. One of the great characters for punishing the opponent. Uh, so if you want to play with a Mishima, they're definitely worth it. But remember one thing, Mishimas are very hard to master. They require a lot of time and experience before you can master them. Uh, one of the great moves that all of the Mishimas have is this Electric Wind God Fist, also called EWGA, which is a great punish that leads to a combo. Definitely one of the best moves in the game that all of the Mishimas have. And if you're looking for a fast character, then there is Ball. These moves are very fast and effective. And also there is Lars, who is a very versatile and fast character. And then there is Steve. He has some great punishes and pokes. And also he is a great character for whiff punishing. Probably one of the fast characters that I know. So in the end, it's all up to you how you want to play and approach your opponent. You need to pick a character that suits your playstyle. Uh, if you like to play offensively, you should pick a character that has safe pressurizing move and if you like to play defensively, you should pick a character that has good punishes. And once you pick a character, you need to start working on his moves. And make sure to use what your character is good at. If your character is good at grabbing, whiffing or pressurizing your opponent, apply that in the battle so you can fully play the character to its full potential and master it. Remember, you can only master your character once you learn the whole command list. It's not gonna take you a lot of time. Just go to the practice mode and watch the whole command list and start working on the moves so you can execute the moves whenever you want. Okay, so practice mode is something I really recommend using to all players. It doesn't really matter how long you've been playing the game, uh, even if you're playing the game for many years or you just started playing it. Going to practice mode will always help to improve your character's game and most of the time you will always learn something new. If I talk about myself, uh, I've been playing Tekken for many years now and uh, I still use practice mode and it really helps me to improve my game in many ways. Uh, because in practice mode you basically have the freedom to select any stage against any specific character uh, and you can check anything from your character's command list to your character's uh, punishes. Uh, especially if you're having trouble uh, uh, punishing a specific move, you can set the computer to do that specific move and then you can see what punishing options do you have with your character. And yeah, you can practice your character's combo in practice mode. So those of you who don't really use practice mode, uh, you should definitely practice with your character in the practice mode because practice mode is an important key feature to actually master your character.
As I mentioned before, every character in the game has some special moves that other characters don't usually have. If you pick a character, you can watch the command list of that character, you will see a lot of moves. But there are these top 10 moves which are very effective and gives you an advantage over the opponent. You need to apply these moves in the battle because they will help you in winning. So what are these top 10 moves? Well, these top 10 moves should have some great properties. Here are some examples like they could have a good evasive property and can hit back a charging opponent evasively. Or they could have a safe property which means they are safe on block. Could be mid or high depending on the move or they could be a good follow up. Or they are a low frame move and one hit could deal a lot of damage. Or they have a long range property which means they could hit the opponent from a long range and sometimes they could hit on low. Let's take another example of Dragonov. Many of you would be familiar with the Dragonov's Russian Assault move. It's forward, 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 two. And it's a great move. Many of the Dragonov players out there use this move because it's a great move to cover a long range and deal a good damage to the opponent. And uh, if they get the opponent uh, on counter with this move, they, they, they get a chance to start a good combo which, which could deal a good amount of damage to the opponent. What's so great about this move is that it has two great properties. It covers a long range and it's safe on block. Even if the opponent blocks it, uh, Dragonos has like 5 or 6 plus frames I believe. So yeah, definitely one of the best moves that Dragonov has. So using these kind of moves with these kind of properties will always give you an advantage over the opponent. And uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you should always just use these top 10 moves in the match. But using these moves in the right time will give you an advantage as they are very effective. So try to apply these moves in the bell. And if you're having trouble determining the top 10 moves of your character, uh, then don't worry. Soon I'll be doing character guides uh, starting with King. And uh, uh, in the starting of the video, I'll list down the top 10 moves and how they should be applied in the battle. So keep an eye out for that. Punishing is a very basic part of the game and is a very important one as well. And I've seen a lot of players, even some really good and experienced players who do not punish their opponent properly. So before I will tell you how you can punish your opponent properly, there might be some players watching this video who don't even know what is punishing. So for those who don't know, the idea is to block an opponent's punishable move that is punishable and hit back with the move of your character that is guaranteed to hit before he can recover from his move. So this is how you can punish your opponent. Your character can punish your opponent with some hits but usually it's 2-3 to three hits. Uh, or sometimes you can even launch punish your opponent which means you can punish him with a move that launches him in the air and you can deal a good amount of damage with a combo. So when it comes to punishing it all comes down to frame data. Many of you would have already started to wonder what frame data is. It's a bit nerdy part of the game so bear with me because learning about frame data has its own advantages and if you know the frame data of some specific moves you can accurately punish your opponent. And if you want to check the frame data of some moves of a character you can check the internet there are some websites like thickengamer.com and rbnorway.org. They have listed the frame data of every move of a character very accurately. And there's also this very famous app of Taken available on iPhone and Android devices called Taken Chicken app. You can check the frame of every move of any character and you can search for a move in a specific number of frames to determine the right punish in this app. So when punishing, always remember that you cannot punish your opponent if he is at below than minus 10 frames. Which means that if he does a move and you block it and he is on minus 8 frames or like minus 9 frames, he is not punishable. Because the fastest move that any character in the game can do could go as fast as 10 frames. And if your opponent does a move uh, that, is, that puts him on minus 10 frames or 11 frames or even minus 12 frames, he is very much punishable. But if your opponent does a safe move on you, sometimes like buff you or pushes you back, that means he has some plus frames and you should not move. So here are some of the examples. Paul just did up forward 3-4 and I blocked it. And after blocking he was on minus 13 frames and I needed a move that was 13 frames or under. So I did laws 3-4 uh, which is a 12 frame move and easily punished him. Another very similar case is with Claudio's hop kick that is up forward 4. Uh, many players are having trouble punishing this move and some even think that this move is not punishable. This move is very much punishable because after blocking Claudio is on minus 13 frames and here I just did King's back 1-2 which is a great 12 frames move to punish the opponent. 
Sometimes when you block your opponent's low attack, it usually puts them in a lot of frames to recover and you get a lot of punishing options, you can even launch punish him. Here Brian just did down forward 3 and after block I punished him. But since he is on minus 26 frames, the best option I got is to launch him and deal a good amount of damage with a combo. Sometimes your opponent does a move that pushes you back, doesn't mean that move is not punishable, but if you try to punish that move with a close range move, he will catch you off guard and will punish you back instead. So if you wanna punish that kind of move properly, you need a long range move like Devil Jin's forward 3 plus 4, which is a great move to punish your opponent from a long range. But not all of the characters in the game have long range punishes, so the best thing you can do is to sidestep these moves and punish them or even launch punish them. This is called whiff punishing. This is a very effective technique, especially when your opponent keeps doing safe moves and you're having trouble punishing some of these moves. But remember, uh, whiff punishing requires some accuracy that usually comes with experience by playing against different characters. Speaking of which, some specific characters in the game have some special moves that can help you in whiffing your opponent's uh, attacks and you can easily punish them back. Uh, here are some examples you can see. These moves are very effective to easily whiff your opponent's attack and then punish them back. So always punish your opponent. If your opponent does a punishable move, try to punish him within the frames he is trying to recover. And if your opponent does a safe move, try to whiff punish that move. Okay, so this may sound a bit weird to you at first, but actually this is the trick of performing better in the game. Because Tekken is about reaction. It's about reacting in a match against your opponent. And obviously whatever your opponent is doing against you in a match, you are actually reacting to it in your way. So closely watching your opponent will help you reacting much better in the game. Basically this tip is about reaction. You will be able to react much better if you will be able to see what move your opponent is about to do. Uh, and at this point, prediction is also very useful, but it's risky. You cannot always predict your opponent. But I'm not saying you to don't predict. I'm simply saying you to observe how your opponent is playing against you within the match and then play against him accordingly. And you will only be able to do that if you are watching and observing your opponent closely. So this tip my friends is actually a pro level tip and you cannot work on this final tip if you haven't followed the previous tips. Because if you haven't mastered your character and learned his important moves and punishes, you will not be able to react properly against your opponent. So once you uh, master your character and uh, you can execute his moves properly, especially his punishes, now you can adapt and react to your opponent's moves. If I talk about myself, I've been playing Taken for many years and this is actually what I do when, when I'm playing serious against, uh, against a good player. I don't really watch my character, I try to focus on his character and try to determine what he's about to do and how, how I, I'm able to defend my character from it and you know uh, how I can uh, punish him and how I can offense on him. And because I have mastered my character and I know what moves I can do with, with my character and what punishing options do I have, I don't really have to focus on my character. I focus on opponent's character, what he's about to do and try to see his, his moves and then react to it. So if you follow this tip and focus on your opponent's character closely, you will easily be able to see what move is about to do and you will be able to punish such moves, especially low moves. If you see a low move, you will easily block that move and then punish it. Because low moves are very hard to detect, focusing on your opponent's character will help you to detect these low moves and you will even be able to low parry these moves and do a combo on your opponent. So this tip is very useful, especially if you want to react against your opponent's low attack and then punish them on the low pokes. This tip will help you. Uh, and sometimes your opponent offensively charge on you and uh, in between those moves he does a low move and you will be able to punish those moves. This tip is also very useful in breaking grabs because if you are able to see what grab your opponent just did, you will press the right in input button to escape the grab. So focusing on your opponent's character is the best way to react in this game. So guys, these were my 5 tips to improve your game in Taken 7. I hope it helped you and if it did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up uh, and you can share this video with your friends so that they can improve their game. And you can subscribe to the channel as I upload uh, lots of Taken content on my channel and I, and I upload my online fights here. And uh, I will inshallah make another Taken guide 
uh, it will be a taken pro guide more specifically and uh, it will include some pro tips like how to use your rage art and rage drive uh, in the game properly so keep an eye out for that and guys a big shout out to lyrici salmon for helping me out on the guide he's an awesome taken player so i'm going to link down his channel in the description so you guys should definitely check him out too and those of you who watched this video till the end here are my other useful tips that will also help you to improve your game don't always rely on combos because if you rely on combos you will always think about launching your opponent in the air and deal damage with a combo and in doing so you will definitely do a punishable move and your opponent will be ready for that so try to avoid that try to play against different players who uses different characters because this will help you to improve your game and get experienced against some characters uh, who have a specific uh, pattern and uh, have a play style and this will help you to improve your game against uh, some moves of those characters which are hard to break try to perfect your movement uh, that can only be done if you have a good command over your d pad of your controller or if you're a stick player uh, the stick of your controller because if you have a good command over the execution of your movement or you can say the d-pad or the a stick of your controller that means you have good command over both your offense and defense of your character and friends try to enjoy the game winning and losing is part of the game losing doesn't mean you take it out personally because in the end it's always a good game so gg everyone